my name is Arvind Mahabri Singh and I am um, the operations director for Trinidad and Tobago Fine Cocoa Company. Uh, we're a new organization, as I said, um, that started a little less than a year ago, a little more than a year ago, rather. Um, and the, the, our remit is to process Trinidad cocoa beans into retail products, consumer products, right? And as well, industrial products as well. Um, to do that, we had to, uh, to employ people who would have a lot of knowledge in the area. And this is where I would introduce our Mary Gray, who is our chief food technologist and chocolatier. Our remit started with a British national, right? Um, his name is Ashley Parasran, he's our managing director. Uh, British national, born, born in Trinidad, right? Heard about great things about the cocoa industry in Trinidad or about the cocoa, quality of cocoa in Trinidad and realized that there, while there was a lot of great cocoa, there, were no, there was little exposure of local chocolatiers. Looking into the fauna, there were very few local chocolatiers. And of those local chocolatiers, you had sort of variable results in terms of quality, right? In Trinidad right now, I think we have probably more than 50 chocolatiers, right? Um, but they're all kitchen scale, right? Small scale uh, cottage industry type producers. Basically what we do, we take local cocoa from different estates and we produce cocoa products with it. Basically, um, in the 1930s, we were a large-scale producer of cocoa, Trinidad was, producing a, a substantial proportion of the worldwide cocoa production. Um, at that point in time, we used to do as much as 35,000 tons of cocoa a year, right? which was a substantial uh, fraction, a substantial percentage of world production. Um, world production has expanded greatly since then. In many countries that have not produced, or were not producing, are now producing the, the ACP countries, the African countries, the whole of the Caribbean, um, and some of the Far East, Malaysia, Thailand, um, uh, Borneo, stuff like that. They, they start producing as well. Um, they have much greater land masses than us, so they're way past us now. But in addition to that, we've also the problem we've had is that our industry has fallen by the wayside in the, the interim. Um, mainly through two experiences, I think. Um, one is probably the discovery of oil, um, and the other one is through the witch's brain disease, which in the 1950s, I believe the 1950s to 70s, has almost entirely wiped out our cocoa industry in Trinidad. Right? Um, Subsequent to that, our industry is a shag of its former self. It now produces around in the, in the vicinity of 500 tons a year, which is minimal in comparison to the world production now. I'm sad. And it's, it's really sad. Uh, it's mo even more sad because we are world renowned as some of the highest quality cocoa in the world. In fact, it has been said we're the highest quality cocoa in the world. The concept of, the, of, our, of our company is to take the highest quality of cocoa in the world and process it using the highest quality of equipment in the world with the best technical expertise available. The phenomenon that we face in Trinidad and Tobago is the phenomenon of abandoned estates, meaning viable, usable trees that are not being harvested, right? Fruit that's falling on the ground every year and rotting on the ground. Um, Someone made an estimate of as much as 70% of the cocoa that, that grows in Trinidad is not reaped. Right? I don't know if that, that is factual. I'm not an agronomist. But I believe him when he says it. There will be old growth trees because we have a lot of old, older estates. A lot of our large estates have been chopped up into much smaller estates um, with abandoned pieces in between. Um, so I think that it wouldn't be very difficult or take or rather it wouldn't take a long time it probably be very difficult <laughs> but it wouldn't take a long time um, and probably cost a lot of money too um, to reinstitute these estates revitalize these estates and have them going so i think it would it would probably not be difficult and I, again i'm not an agronomist i'm just giving my impression of someone interested in the market in the in the area i i'm under the impression that we could double or triple our production of cocoa 
very, very easily over a very short period of time. A large amount of land that would have been under cocoa cultivation before is no longer under cocoa cultivation because it's been used for housing, um, road construction, that kind of stuff. So there is, there is a lot of attrition of land, but there still is an opportunity. We may never get back to 35,000 tons, but I, can't, I don't see any reason why 10,000 tons might be possible or 15,000 tons, right? Again, we are a very high value cocoa product. It's um, the, what we sell it for, what we get for our cocoa beans is far more than many get. Um, I understand um, Venezuela is probably, so there are some regions of Venezuela that are probably a little bit higher than us, but for the most part as a country, we probably uh, attract some of the highest prices, right? if not the highest price. For our organization, it's because we're not an agronomy organization, it's, it doesn't affect us directly. But certainly that attitude towards, um, towards agriculture being uh, low-grade employment, right? That, that attitude affects supply of our, of our raw materials, right? And it's something that is of great concern to, to all in the industry, right? But to deal with that, one has to deal with that from an almost nationwide perspective. Um, and I believe that the, the thrust should be to develop the jobs and the job descriptions, the job types, to give and allow more dignity to the employees who have who are taking up those jobs. Right? Um, my thought on that is greater specialization, greater training, um, trying to find ways to improve the productivity of each individual employee. Productivity meaning not necessarily their own personal one, but finding um, systems, methods, processes that achieve the job um, more efficiently, okay? This would reduce the number of staff required to do a particular job and therefore allow for the job to be more highly paid. This is not about the product, but it's just simply about how we try to celebrate the differences in the areas in which we come. So we would, we would say whether it came from Tamina, whether it came from the Larian and the state which we were on, whether it came from Rio Claro, Tabakit, um, we we soon very excited to get some from Cedrus, right? So we try to develop flavor proof flavors from all different areas in Trinidad, so that we can um, we can then it's about celebrating the differences in our local cocoa. A lot of chocolate is differentiated by a lot of different additions. You put nuts in it, or fruits in it, and stuff like that. What we hope to differentiate with is by region, These, the natural flavor. So in other words then, we focus on the purity of the product rather than trying to enhance it into, into something that it's not. So one of our first products is, you see the packaging is like a stepan tin, tenapan, I believe. So what is essentially inside this is a five gram chocolate. So it's filled with 25 five gram chocolates, which is essentially eaten chocolate. And as we said earlier, the estate for this thing is uh, Tamana. There's a little information here based on the processing. So we have a crunching time, the roasting period, when the beans were harvest that made this chocolate bar, as well as some details on the, the flavor profile. So this is a 50% bar. We have different percentage bars. We have a dark that is 70% but we hope to introduce more percentages so like a, a range we will soon be able to offer but as of now we just have 50% milk and a 70% dark but with time we'll be having like a 45% we so see a 65% for people who you know they want a little bit more cocoa or less we will soon have those flavors available and another product we have is this is more catered for the chocolate industry sorry the hotel industry or or the chocolatiers, this is more industrial size that they use. This is a kovachava, which is 70% dark. And also the same feature as the tins where we provide the origin, some roasting information, crunching times, a flavor profile, and as when the beans will harvest that made these chocolate bars. So chocolatiers could buy these and to make chocolates or people who can bakery, chefs, so that they can make other products from it, like truffles or ashes 
even baking stuff. If I were to offer a 70% chocolate bar or these small 5 milligrams, I would um, the same 70% in this size. The only difference is that one will be tempered or will be untempered. Tempering meaning the tempered material will be steep and tinsel, like a nice shine and a snap. But the, this is untempered so that it it will look undesirable. You see the cold butter tray on top, but it's meant for the hotels, for the chefs to use, and chocolatiers. So they don't really care about the blooms that have been shown because they're going to melt it down to make other products. But eating chocolate, we will temper it. So no difference in terms of the formulation. There's one, yeah, one stage, as we missed. One process. Uh, and this is what we hope to bring, or what we're bringing to the market. The ability to understand, and it, it leads to not just national pride, but it leads to regional pride, right? I am from Tabakit. This is Coco that's growing Tabakit. This, the address of this thing and the address of, my, of me is the same. And that's what we hope to celebrate. We hope to be able to bring that sort of pride into it. <clears throat> and hopefully that pride will be translated into greater productivity and greater um, expansion of, of the area in terms of the cocoa bean growth.